This hack tip is brought to you by Midphase. Hello and welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we break down the concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm your host, Darren Kitchen, and today I mourn the loss of the active partition on my solid state drive. And also I have a hangover from E3. But I figured this is a great time for us to go over a whole bunch of the comments that we've gotten so far because there's a lot of good nuggets in there. Some Q&A, a little bit of tips, and then we'll continue on with our series of the fundamentals of, well, we're using WPA encryption breaking as our uh, example here, but basically we're doing a whole lot of fun fundamentals. So let's just go ahead and kick it off with PC Warrior 55 who writes, this is great for sh short passwords uh, or dictionary passwords. Of course, he's talking about when we were speaking about John the Ripper, uh, but what about randomly generated passwords longer than, say, eight characters and numbers? It would take you years, potentially even centuries to crack. Any suggestions for more efficient methods to break this kind of password? Love Hack5, by the way, and this new um, and this new thing that you guys are doing is great. Wish you guys, or uh, wish there was, you know, a new one more often though. And I understand you guys have tons of other things behind, besides this. Well, yeah, we do, but you know, thank you so much for that feedback, you're right. You, it, it would take forever to do with, say, John the Ripper. Brute force is not the most elegant approach to it, and here soon we will be talking about tools to do things with, uh, well, not just your general purpose CPU, but say your GPU. If you've got one of those awesome graphics cards for gaming, you can put it to use cracking WPA. We'll be talking about this a little bit later here, but I've pulled up Pirate here, and that's a, a wonderful tool. We'll get into a lot more about GPU cracking, but for First, I figured, why don't we go ahead and uh, and practice the skills that we learned in the first hack tip about piping stuff and uh, actually do a little bit of math as far as how long it would take to crack a WPA key if we were only trying, say, 400 keys a second. So what I'm going to do is echo, quote, 26. So we're just going to pretend 26 characters, just the lowercase alpha, uh, alphabet, you know, not even numeric, right? So 26 alpha, lowercase. Uh, to the power of seven, just a seven character max password, and this is why you should be using long passwords. Still, that divided by 400 tries per second, so divided by 60 seconds in an hour, 24 hours in a day, and if we pipe this to BC, which is short for bash calculator, we can actually see that it's going to take 13,944 days. Yeah, that might be a while. So anyway, I thought that was a little fun one and you can use that all the time when you're in bash and you're like, wow, I really need to do echo quote two plus two quote and then pipe that over to BC and you're like, that's four. How great is that? Okay. Well, anyway, next comment up here uh, is from H-J-E-R-P-E-88, I'm gonna butcher all your guys' names. To be honest, I love the long episodes. It gives so much more relaxed feeling than the short ones, just because it doesn't feel like just another tutorial. Uh, when it's more like a show, it feels much more, uh, you know, put together, uh, much better to put it on the TV, sit back on the couch, have your favorite drink, but that's just me. Uh, that's not just you, and uh, from the get-go, Hack 5 proper has always been a long-form show, and I feel very greatly towards the whole variety thing because there's a little bit of something for everything. Hack tip, we're trying something new, and of course I knew that we were going to get some uh, mixed feedback here, so thanks for sending that along. You are in the camp of long-form, and that's fine. That's totally cool. We got another one here. Uh, opposing 770 Hen writes, I like it for, far more than the long shows just because it is concise and straight. I can watch the long form shows Hack 5 just because it contains so much more junk. Or he's saying he can't watch Hack 5 because he's got a lot of junk. Just his opinion. Which you're all entitled to. I don't think it's junk. Anyway, so there's both sides of the camp. I just figured those are two good ones to kind of throw out there as people, you know, figure out what we're doing. But hey, thank you, because we're figuring out what we're doing. All right, next one here is Spike Spiegel, who writes in to say, Darren, what's the model of the Wi-Fi adapter used, the, the Encore one? That's the model number. Hope that helps. Anyways, there are a few raw link chipsets that uh, don't completely suck, and that's one of them that's good. So anyway, Corey writes in, and he says, um, about the show on, uh, let's see, oh, he says 
Uh, a lot of tutorials on YouTube prompt him to use the command Mac changer and then tac tac Mac and whatever Mac address you want and then the interface. But it seems a lot easier, at least he says it seems a lot easier to do if config like I showed WLAN 0, HW, Ether and then the Mac address. Well, uh, like I said, that's another way to do it. Do they do the same thing? Absolutely, they do the same thing. Um, I personally like using the ifconfig method, but Mac changer will work just as well. In fact, if you man Mac changer, whoops, not Mac changer, F, Mac changer, you see there's a whole bunch of different options. TAC R right there for random will just give you a random Mac address. So if I do Mac changer, TAC R, WLAN zero, um, I don't think I have, I don't think it's, uh, anyway, it would give you a random Mac address. Um, Another comment here by Hydrox24. Does your MAC address reset on reboot? Absolutely, it sure does. Uh, is there a way to change your IP address from Brunt Laces? Well, yeah, sure. The ifconfig command can also be used to change your IP address if you're, say, on a you know a land that has a DHCP server that's doling out IP addresses. You can release, you can renew, you can try to get a, a new IP address. Uh, you could just set yourself a static address. If you're, say, at, typically at home, like with a cable or DSL modem, those residential services usually have uh, dynamic IP addresses, and that is to say that it's not the same one every time. It's not a static, and usually, and the this is just in my experience, just unplugging the cable modem for an hour, plugging it back in will get you a new IP address. So I hope that helps you out there. Uh, one more, Ace, uh, or Asus point, ASAP point, uh, goes ahead and writes, uh, I thought Paul had fixed, uh, uh, figured out a way for you not to have to wear a hat. Hat? Anyway, uh, another one here from Bryant <laughs> Massacre. I should have read these ahead of time. Anyway, he writes, uh, who plays the music in the back? Uh, those would be our friends Prono Bozo, Dale Chase, and Dualcore uh, supply great music for the show. You should check out their uh, awesome Nerdcore and Electronica albums. Okay, so we've got a couple more great tips here in just a second though, but I first want to take a quick break. Midphase has been providing simple, smart, and reliable web hosting since 2003. It features unlimited disk space and bandwidth with an exclusive discount, six months free for Hack5 viewers. Midphase provides 24 by 7 premium support by phone, live chat, and email, as well as free website builders and simple installs of WordPress, Drupal, and Joomla. Get an $100 worth of search engine credits from Google and Yahoo. Visit www.midphase.com slash hack5 to get six months free of web hosting through this exclusive Hack5 offer. All right, and finally, our last tip comes from our dear friend Mubix, who writes in about finding out the chipset of, say, your uh, USB-based wireless radio here. I like to do LSUSB or D message, but he points out that if you actually do air driver, tac ng, space loaded, you can actually find out what uh, driver you have loaded, if it's the Mac 802.11 like I have right now, or if you're going to switch to you know, Mad Wi-Fi, the Realtek 8187, whatever it may be. Thank you so much, Mivix, for sending that in. What are your tips? What's tickling your technology? So you have good stuff? Go ahead and send it by tips at hack5.org. Also, I want to go ahead and give you guys homework for this week. As we continue the series of the fundamentals of, well, in this case, WPA cracking, which is just you know kind of an adventure of like lots of fun technologies along the way. If there's a technology that, say, even you use all the time and you'd like to know more about, hit us up in the comments. Let me know what it is that you want to know about, and we would love to put together an epic hack tip just for you. Uh, so go ahead and either do that or hit us up tips at hack5.org. And be sure to check out our sister show, Hack5, for more stuff just like this. I know you're going to love it. I'll be there reminding you to trust your technolist. Bad, bad, bad with, bandwidth. <laughs>